Mm -hmm. online lecture, whatever we want to call it. Um, this one's going to be on the sense of taste. Um, so I'm going to go through the same eight things, but for taste we're going to stop after the t gustatory experience, no theory or impairment. Um, the other senses are taste or gustatory, smell or olfactory, and the body senses or some aesthetic. Let's do taste. Taste and smell are related. Uh, sense of taste is really a combination of taste and smell. Both of them are among our more primitive senses um, related to kind of unconscious survival. Uh, they're connected to our involuntary nervous system, vomiting, nausea, uh, salivation, uh, digestive system, gastric juices. And they're connected to emotions. We have um, smell and taste can evoke uh, emotional learning. Smells and tastes you associate with like grandma and the smell of her kitchen and happy memories or unpleasant. Ugh, that's disgusting. Um, and they're meant to, you know, emotions guide us to survival actions. We talked early on in the course about uh, fear and how that helps you to kind of quick action and unthinking quick response and taste and smell are the inputs for that taste. Um, without smell, we only have five types of taste sensors in the mouth. The stimulus is, of course, the food molecules, food molecules that we put in our mouth, their chemical energy. The receptor are our taste buds. Sensitivity to all of that is, uh, to taste, is based on the number of taste buds we have. The average person has somewhere between two and four thousand taste buds taste buds, excuse me. Some people are super tasters. They have um, more than twice that. Uh, you, there's a link to an article about people who taste too much and they reference Rachel Antonu Antonucci in there. She is apparently a super taster, but it's a different Rachel Antonucci. Um, so structurally, you go to the tongue, although we have taste buds throughout our mouth. Um, and on the tongue are papillae, um, which are the bumps on your tongue. And in that, deep down here, are taste buds. And taste buds line the uh, walls of the papillae and um, are found all over the tongue, the roof of the mouth, the cheeks, even under the tongue. So detection and transduction. Uh, the little bumps, papillae, taste buds line the walls. Each taste bud has about 20 receptor sites for uh, molecules. Um, these receptor sites bind with molecules of food, sorry, that's a typo there, such as sugars like glucose and sucrose dissolved in saliva. Um, that binding of the molecule is similar to what we saw in the second unit when the neurotransmitter bind um, to receptor sites on the synapse. When the molecules of foods people eat fit into the receptors, the signal is fired into the brain, which then interprets the taste sensation. So that is detection and transduction. Um, the pathway is pretty simple. I'm not going to spend as much time on it. You've got various cranial nerves. Cranial nerves are na nerves in the skull or um, in the head, not um, from the um, spinal cord. And it goes from the tongue to the hindbrain, the medulla, just a more primitive structure, medulla oblongata, and then up to the thalamus, and then to the gustatory cortex, which is kind of inside. Um, the temporal lobe. And you should note, I incorrectly said um, when we were talking about sensory substitution and Eric Wienmeyer that um, you would think that the stuff from his tongue goes to somatosensory. And, and that's actually partially true. The um, touch and pressure sensations go from the body, including the tongue, up to somatosensory. 
but if he was tasting that stuff, it would go to gustatory. Um, what's the gustatory experience like? Taste buds are replaced every 10 to 14 days, and it's pretty straightforward. We have five types of taste buds, sweet, salty, sour, bitter, and the um, one that was more recently added, umami or savory. Um, sweet and salty are tastes that we evolutionarily have adapted to look for and like because those represent foods that are generally rich in nutrients. And umami is a satisfying taste, that savory taste, because it usually represents something that's rich in protein. And of course the gustatory experience is needs to be combined with the sense of smell for us to really taste foods. When our nose is blocked up, uh, we don't taste things as well. And I believe that is it. That's the end of the show. Um, so that was nice and quick, six minutes. We'll end it there. Uh, click on the next one.